This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone, I'm Calvin O'Dell, Director of Community Development for the City of Manassas Park. This is our FY 2021 Capital Improvements Plan presentation. Um, we are the Department of Community Development responsible for developmental services, uh, which is building, planning, zoning, code enforcement, uh, as well as infrastructure maintenance, water, sewer, stormwater, uh, the various utilities in the city, as well as uh, site inspections, uh, streets maintenance. We maintain all of our own streets uh, in the city that are not privately maintained. VDOT does not maintain any of our uh, street infrastructure in the city. And we also are facilities and fleet. So all of the city owned structures and buildings and all of the city vehicles and equipment. Um, first, we'll take a look at our general fund projects. Um, these are service improvement projects funded primarily from the general fund. Again, uh, we have two enterprise funds, water sewer enterprise fund and the stormwater enterprise fund. Um, some of these projects especially when they're associated with public works, how, uh, housing of employees or vehicles, things like that. Uh, it is only fair that the funds get split amongst the general fund and the enterprise funds since the projects serve all three. Uh, so some of these projects appear in all three funds. Uh, we've tried to group them so that they show uh, where they're primarily funded from. First, we'll start with transportation projects. Um, the Connor Drive extension, uh, that is an ongoing project to extend route uh, Connor way out to Route 28. It currently stops short um, of Route 28 uh, between Euclid Avenue and 28. Uh, used to be connected, I believe, as a gravel road but has been barricaded off for some time. This project will be the first step in bringing Connor Drive all the way to the downtown, uh, to Manassas Drive in the downtown redevelopment district. Um, this project cost is 2.26 million in total. Uh, we anticipate needing an additional 588,000 in FY21 budget to uh, finish off that total. Right now, we're at a bit of a delay, waiting for uh, the various property owners to sign wetlands permits so that we can begin work. Uh, but we expect that project, the construction of that project, to begin um, either at the end of FY20, but certainly to be completed in FY21. Um, Upper Kent Drive reconstruction. Uh, Upper Kent was in a very bad state uh, a few years back. We did some patchwork to it. The patches did not hold very well. Uh, we conducted some studies to determine that we needed a full depth repaving of Upper Kent Drive. Uh, we would not be able to sustain patching efforts. So again, we've entered into a revenue sharing agreement with VDOT um, to fund complete reconstruction of Kent Drive. This is the section of Kent Drive between Cabell and Manassas Drive. Uh, we call it Upper Kent. Um, total cost of this project is estimated to be uh, just over half million dollars. Uh, we're asking for the majority of that balance in FY21, and we only ask for the engineering portion in FY20. A big issue here in the city uh, is our corrugated metal culverts. Uh, there are several large corrugated metal culverts uh, that run underneath of roadways. Some of them qualify as actual structures in the in VDOT's structure inventory list. Some of them do not. Um, the biggest uh, the biggest urgency among those is Mosby Drive. Uh, there was a massive wing wall failure at that culvert some years back due to the poor bottom condition of the culvert. We stabilized that with riprap and immediately started seeking funding to replace that culvert. We had an unsuccessful round 
of funding uh, of funding requests that pushed construction and design back. We are now trying to move forward with construction. Hope to have construction actually underway by the end of this fiscal year. Um, also, Manassas Drive at Russia Branch Culvert is a much larger culvert under Manassas Drive, which carries approximately 16,000 vehicles a day. Uh, the bottom condition of that culvert is very poor as well. Uh, we're expecting about 3.2 million in project costs there. We were recently approved for a uh, revenue sharing agreement for that project. Um, we're just being told that potentially if the governor's uh, budget amendment goes through that we may not be able to access those funds until FY22. Um, again, that's $3.2 million uh, with revenue sharing agreement. The city would be responsible for half of that. Uh, Manassas Drive at Public Works is another corrugated metal culvert underneath the Manassas Drive. Less traffic on that section of Manassas Drive but nonetheless deteriorating culvert. Uh, that is one that we are hoping we don't need to replace in its entirety. Perhaps we can just repair or slip line and stabilize. So it's a much lower price tag because we're not considering full, re re uh, full replacement with cast in place culvert. Right now we're looking at $200,000 somewhere in the FY22 to FY25 timeline. Kirby Street culvert is a very similar culvert to Mosby court culvert where it's the only way in and out of a subdivision uh, so when we when we recently evaluated Kirby Street we saw some uh, again signs of deterioration things that will uh, set off some bells and whistles we have increased the urgency of that uh, in our capital improvements plan and we're this year for the first time having an actual and engineer's inspection performed of that culvert that will help guide the actual uh, urgency of the repairs. But we are looking at repairs there, not full replacement. Uh, and as you can see, the cost difference uh, is the real driver there. If we can fix it for $135,000 and buy ourselves um, decades more time for an actual replacement plan, then that's the right way to go. Um, going to spend about 535000 on this cause in FY21, and that's culvert repair in general, but $3.6 million over five years. Street resurfacing and maintenance. Um, we would love to do about a $1 million in street resurfacing every year, milling and paving. Uh, we go a long way to answering some of the complaints uh, about pavement condition. Unfortunately, our sources, our source for resurfacing, um, there's not really revenue sharing money available, definitely will not be with the current economic picture from the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, all of those budgets are being dialed back at the state level. It has always been difficult to get state money for milling and paving. Um, it's one of the lower categories of urgency, uh, normally new projects, additional lane mileage, uh, or existing projects that need additional funding come first. Uh, so we've always used our MDTA local fund as the primary source, if not the PRTC Motor Fuels Tax Fund. Uh, the PRTC Motor Fuels Tax Fund has not been growing because of the reduced gas prices. So as gas prices hover around uh, $1.69 to $2 a gallon, there is really no money um, coming into that fund. Uh, will grow if gas prices go up to you know four dollars a gallon or so but nobody wants that except for I think me sometimes I uh, actually like to see money in that motor fuels tax fund for this purpose um, but the MVATA local fund is really our only source to uh, resurface with we have this as a steadily growing year-over-year -year expenditure um, started at a quarter million even in FY19 or FY18 and has grown to $263,000 that we'll be doing in FY21. Uh, we also have another general line item in the in this capital improvements plan called additional streets projects. That's traditionally been used to handle concrete repairs, 
crosswalk repairs, things of that nature that aren't direct resurfacing operations. But we always look to if we don't have another project lined up and we don't have it packaged and ready to go, uh, we can always use that money to do some additional resurfacing. Uh, altogether, we spend $352,000 in street resurfacing and maintenance uh, in 21 and $1.9 million over five years. PRTC motor fuels tax projects. Again, this is a fund that has not been um, very healthy with gas, gas prices in their current condition. Um, they in, initiated a gas tax floor that helped improve the future outlook of the fund, but prices at the pump right now are actually below that floor. So uh, although predictions are steady, and predictions you know show the fund is uh, having enough money to operate we don't have a great deal of money to uh, propose future projects out of that fund what we do have is some smaller streets projects uh, associated with transportation that uh, we can utilize prtc motor fuels tax funds for that will reduce the impact on the general fund uh, but um, still help us achieve our transportation goals uh, we have a no parking sign installation project, trying to get away from uh, painting yellow curb everywhere, uh, using signs which initially are a bigger investment but last longer, are easier to repair. We have a very heavily parked city, so when we have to try to paint curb, we actually have to spend staff time putting out no parking signs, sometimes use police enforcement to get those signs uh, listened to. And then we still have to be cognizant of the you know, nearby vehicles so that we don't get after spray on them and things like that. Uh, we've switched over to a sign policy. Uh, we plan on spending $15,000 on installation, no parking signs in FY21, 79,000 over five years. Uh, we're currently looking at actually investing in a sign machine uh, to help reduce those costs. The other major project coming out of PRTC Motor Fuels Tax Fund is upgrade to our traffic signals. Um, something that I discussed also in my operating budget presentation. Uh, we are renewing our focus on signals inspection and maintenance. Uh, we have tentatively scheduled our intersections for upgrade. Uh, and what we currently see is a level of uh, precedence and priority. Um, but we're looking to spend 11,500 in FY21, and it's total 46,000 over five years to improve all of our intersections. The next category, major category in capital improvements projects is our public works equipment. Um, we have a list of various large pieces of equipment that all fall in to uh, what we call public works equipment. Um, we're looking to spend about $340,000 in total in FY21 to upgrade our equipment. Um, in general, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, since a lot of this equipment serves purpose in the streets operations, water and sewer utility operations, stormwater operations, uh, the costs are divided for much of this equipment across all three funds, the general fund and both enterprise funds. Um, so it makes the picture somewhat difficult um, to go through in the actual Excel spreadsheet of the budget. I've tried to summarize it here so you can get a better picture of exactly how the splits look. Um, altogether, uh, $720,000 in public works and equipment investment over the next five years. Uh, here is a chart showing all of the equipment, all the equipment that needs to be uh, either purchased or replaced um, in order of fiscal year. Um, this is a total cost. Remember that for most of these pieces of equipment, those costs will be divided amongst three funds. Miscellaneous projects, these are projects that are difficult to 
categorize, sort of fall into their own um, realm, don't meet a large scale definition. Um, one of the major uh, issues that occurs in any jurisdiction is a dilapidated or abandoned property. Uh, the city of Manassas Park is no different. From time to time, um, something happens at a residence where it stops being maintained. Um, sometimes the situation is unfortunate for both the city and the owners, uh, but when things get bad, and the house or the structure becomes a danger uh, to the citizens of Manassas Park. The city needs to act to remove that structure uh, if we can't get cooperation from the owners. Uh, this line item for property demolition provides a funding source for such demolitions that are necessary uh, when ordered by the building official. Uh, it's $50,000 we have allocated to that in FY21 in this budget. Um, again, the Connor Center Master Rehab Plan is a an attempt to look at a more comprehensive rehabilitation of the existing infrastructure in the Connor Center Industrial District. Uh, we know that we have corrugated metal culvert that is failing uh, all over the Connor Center, but we also know that we have privately maintained lift stations that complicate things on the sewer infrastructure side. And we also know that we have had difficulty um, with achieving our fire flows uh, for new businesses, new planned site development in the Connor Center. Uh, because we have, and we also have major issues with large vehicles and uh, what they do to the pavement at certain intersections uh, when large trucks break and the damage they do to the pavement. So since we have issues across the board uh, with our various types of infrastructure in the Connor Center, it's probably the right time to take a look at all of those issues and try to paint a big picture of what the actual uh, master rehab of the Connor Center looks like. So this $200,000 in 22 to 23 is to actually put together a master rehabilitation plan that will guide our infrastructure improvements to make sure that we're not throwing good money after bad, that we're doing things in a logical order that provides comprehensive improvement of the district itself. Um, $50,000 investment in 21 for these miscellaneous projects is all property demolition. And then in FY22, we start expenditures on the Connor Center Master Rehab. Again, quarter million dollars over five years for these miscellaneous items. Facilities, um, a lot of our facilities are newer, does not mean that they don't cost to maintain. And then again, we have aging facilities as well. Uh, there's always room for capital investment in facilities. These are some of the citywide facilities requirements, meaning that they apply to all of the city buildings and locations. Uh, first project is a, is a BAS um, system. This would allow the facilities manager to integrate all of the facilities controls components um, and work on them uh, remotely, uh, access them, take a look at what's going on. Uh, again, energy efficiency by able, being able to control lighting and thermostatic settings throughout the day and in, in the evening, and also being able to uh, look remotely at what's going on uh, with the HVAC systems in all of the buildings. Um, the, we're not, not planning any investment into this BAS system in FY21, uh, but we're looking forward to spending money on these projects from FY22 on. The other, the other citywide, uh, consideration at most or all of the city facilities is parking lots. We have never had a very comprehensive parking lot resurfacing plan and it's starting to show. Um, there's, I think our parking lots are deteriorated across the board with possibly the exception of City Hall that was repaved with the private development of the city center uh, in 2007. Um, but it's time now to start expending money on parking lot resurfacing. Uh, so this capital improvements plan takes a look at those parking needs, those parking lot resurfacing needs, 
um, and tries to account for future funds for that um, goal. Facilities projects at the public works garage. Um, it's very important that we get air conditioning in the garage. Uh, currently, summertime heat temperatures uh, make it rather miserable inside the public works garage. Really cuts back on efficiency um, and the effectiveness. Uh, cannot uh, stress enough how difficult it must be to work on vehicles uh, in those extreme the extreme heat, uh, just keeping the bay doors open, trying to use fans for airflow, uh, really slows down productivity, I'm sure. Uh, we need to get air conditioning in those facilities. Uh, $120,000 investment, though, it is a large building. It's a large system. Um, security fencing at Public Works. This has always been a concern and an issue uh, recently heightened uh, by the by the construction of another residential subdivision that uh, is immediately adjacent to the public works yard. Uh, the big concern there is we, we do um, store things, uh, store brine tanks. There is used motor oil um, out there. There is equipment that people can get hurt on. We do not want uh, children from the subdivisions uh, roaming our yard freely. Uh, it's, uh, there's too much heavy equipment, there's too many opportunities uh, for a spill of um, chemicals that we could be responsible for. So uh, we're recommending security fencing all the way around the Public Works garage and yard. Um, it's $50,000 investment, but uh, money well spent to keep our assets secure and to keep kids safe. Um, Rugby storage yard improvements. We have since our first DEQ audit been making do with temporary erosion and sediment controls at our rugby storage yard, which is off of Rugby Road that we use to store our materials uh, for repairs and also our spoils. Um, we need to implement long-term erosion controls there. We also have issues uh, when we're doing emergency repairs at night with an, how poorly lit the yard is, we can't see uh, to, to work without using headlights of vehicles and flashlights to try to see our way around the yard. Um, it's a small, tight area. We've tried to be as efficient as we possibly can with the space, but not having a well-lit uh, yard really hinders our operation. Um, and we also have issues with the spoils and our materials getting wet. There is no covering over the yard, uh, which means that oftentimes it's just a money mess. And we've had issues with our fill materials over compacting, um, causing you know our repairs to uh, need revisited um, because they settle out too much. And we also have issues with trying to remove spoils time to time because once the yard gets saturated to a certain extent, a rubber tire loader can't, can't load dump trucks efficiently to remove the spoils. Uh, so part of this rugby storage yard improvements uh, to accompany the, the long-term erosion and sediment controls and the lighting is also uh, putting a roof over part of the yard so that we can try to keep uh, control of how wet it gets. Um, the roof at the public works facility is failing terribly. <laughs> the trash cans, buckets uh, on any rainy day in the building. We have tried to coat the roof um, with a very expensive epoxy coating. Uh, we did that within the last 10 years. It, it helped improve things for a bit, but then the leaks came back. We have uh, tightened up some of the some of the areas where we can see there's obvious uh, infiltration of water. Um, however, the building needs a new roof. Uh, it is a very old metal building that has the original roof material on it. Um, that's a $100,000 project. Again, it's served by all three funds. Um, HVAC replacement of Public Works. This one uh, is not uh, as urgent as the uh, air conditioning at the garage or uh, the roof at Public Works, but the equipment on for the Public Works building is is aging. Um, 
we're seeing a lot of failures just from being exposed to the elements for as long as they have been. Those rooftop units are uh, in need of replacement. They're well past their expected life expectancy. Um, again, the investment in these facilities projects at the Public Works Building the Garage is $170,000 in FY21 uh, for a total of $760,000 over the next five years. Facilities projects at the police department. Uh, this is one of our uh, newer facilities uh, completed in 2007, occupied in 2007. Uh, but already we have had issues, multiple issues with roof leaks. Um, we did an extensive round of patching and repairs uh, in 2015, I believe. Um, we still struggle with leaks in the boiler room and the electrical room associated with a small standalone roof that has a massive chiller system on it. Um, we may, if we cannot isolate an individual source of any of those leaks, we may wind up pulling all of that equipment off of the roof and doing a roof repair of that area uh, because of the amount of equipment on it and the craning that will be required to remove that equipment. Uh, we anticipate a $120,000 repair. Um, building paint and caulk, this is something that uh, it's, it's a very nice uh, facility with a brick facade. Um, but uh, facades like that come with their own complications with around the windows, casement type windows that the caulk must be maintained on. Um, so we're starting to see infiltration of water around those windows and we need to do a comprehensive uh, paint and caulk evaluation and repair on the building. Uh, we're not proposing any expenditures at the police department, uh, capital expenditures in 21, but $140,000 worth of facilities capital investment over five years. Um, fire department bay door replacement, this is been something that we've struggled with for a long time. Um, there's a picture in this slide that shows how the hardware on the door uh, has been relocated so many times um, that it's hard to find material to hold to. The springs at the top of the door fail regularly. In fact, they actually keep spare springs on hand upstairs in the mechanical loft uh, because they fail so frequently. Uh, the doors are not, um, for their size, they're not of the right quality. They're not something that really I would advise reinstalling. We're looking for an upgraded product, something heavier, uh, heavier track system, heavier spring system, um, or a folding door uh, that utilizes a completely different methodology. Uh, it's really unreasonable to be addressing bay door issues um, half dozen times a year and that's where we're at with these bay doors um, unfortunately it's very expensive there are six very large bay doors that all need to be replaced uh, at the same time it's an estimated hundred and thirty thousand dollar project and we're currently shooting for fy25 uh, to execute this for fleet um, we are have a very aging fleet almost across the board, uh, with the exception of the PD fleet, which uh, police department started a uh, lease replacement process um, before the rest of the city. Um, the governing body has recently approved lease purchase um, agreement for the rest or lease lease purchase option for the rest of the city. Uh, this should renew our fleet. Uh, go from vehicles that average 15 to 20 years in age to vehicles that are uh, less than seven years in age. This will drastically increase fuel economy and reduce maintenance costs across the board. Um, for public works vehicles, of course, we're primarily talking about uh, pickup trucks, but we also have some special vehicles that are uh, quite expensive but they are the types of vehicles we need to do our utilities maintenance, our infrastructure maintenance. Um, 
looking for hundred nearly hundred and fifty thousand dollars in investment in FY twenty one and one point two seven million dollars over five years. This picture may change slightly with the new lease agreement. Um, our investment will our investment structure will look different. Um, again, all of these vehicles, uh, vast majority of these vehicles, excuse me, will be split amongst the various funds, general fund, water sewer enterprise fund, and the stormwater enterprise fund because they are used multi-purpose uh, across all of our functions as a public works division. Um, those purchases look like this. Um, of course, as you can see, the, the water service truck being one of those specialty vehicles, we're actually replacing two vehicles with one specialty vehicle. Um, but you can see it's a much more expensive vehicle, special purpose with a crane and a generator uh, for actually doing water repairs. Um, but this is the chart of the proposed uh, purchases over the next five years. Um, and again, we have one uh, existing lease that covered a new sweeper and TV inspection truck uh, that our last payment will be in FY21. Community development, general services vehicles. These are vehicles that serve city hall staff, uh, the elected officials, um, commissioner of revenue, um, treasurer, and if any um, mayor or council members needed a, a vehicle, these are the general service vehicles. Um, also for finance and IT. Um, we're not planning any expenditures in FY21, but the entire fleet is comprised of aging Crown Victorias uh, and aging SUVs um, that are anywhere from 15 to 20 years old, uh, need to be replaced. As you can see, the interior condition is, is terrible in some of these vehicles, and uh, some of them have sat in the lot um, in need of repair. Uh, just repairs haven't been prioritized on them um, because people don't want to use them. So we're going to plan to replace the uh, some of the vehicles for um, more specific for their purpose. Uh, we need a Dodge Caravan, uh, something of that nature for the porter position where they can store cleaning supplies and tools. Um, IT prefers um, SUVs for the space in the back to haul server uh, equipment, um, battery backups, things of that nature. Um, the others we're looking to, uh, the general services facilities manager uh, would like a Ford Transit. Of course, that is a uh, maintenance type vehicle, a box truck, a smaller version of a box truck so that they can uh, haul HVAC repair equipment um, and tools, things of that nature. Um, but looking to downsize some of the vehicles to Ford Fusions uh, where, it's, where it suits. Um, no need to have the larger uh, eight cylinder Crown Victorias where you can have more fuel efficient, smaller vehicles that are easy to, easier to drive and easier to maneuver with less fuel consumption. Um, water and sewer enterprise fund projects. These are projects that are primarily for water and sewer purposes. Uh, our SCADA system was installed uh, around the 2008 timeline has proven to uh, fail to function more than it's actually functioned. Um, we need a SCADA system so that we get alerts when there are issues at our various pump stations, uh, lift stations, and uh, vaults throughout the city. Uh, if we don't get those alerts via email or text message, uh, we risk not uh, knowing about the problem until it's out of hand. Um, so for both data gathering, understanding the function of our stations, 
tracking and monitoring potential issues and emergency response purposes, we need to uh, upgrade our SCADA system to something that is functional, uh, non-proprietary, something that can be maintained in the long run. Um, this is a very expensive upgrade and improvement, but a very essential upgrade and improvement. Um, looking out to FY25 um, to accomplish this goal. Again, project cost is an estimated $1 million. Uh, rate study and asset management plan. Um, we need a third party comprehensive analysis of our water and sewer billing rates, something that considers our purchase agreements, our debt service that's outstanding and our debt service that may be necessary um, in the future for both UOSA improvements and capacity purchase. Uh, we need a comprehensive analysis that takes into account our capital assets and our future capital investment needs uh, so that we can better uh, understand where we're at with our utility rates and whether or not those can be reduced or need to be increased, what the right answer is guided by the entire financial picture. Um, so that project cost is an estimated $150,000. Uh, we're looking at FY22 to have that study conducted. Uh, development of a master plan for our water distribution system. Um, we are currently working on a new water model for the city, but we need an entire master plan that looks at alternative strategies for operating our distribution system. Um, and then helps us to plan system upgrade projects. Um, again, we are uh, tracked and audited by Virginia Department of Health uh, when it comes to our water distribution practices. And uh, we need to make sure that we always are in compliance with state requirements uh, for water distribution and that we have plans and backup plans for making sure that our citizens get safe drinking water and plenty of fire flow at all times. Um, we have taken some items in the capital improvements plan and lumped them together in the category we call ROM, uh, repair, replacement, uh, upgrades, and maintenance. Um, the water and sewer, this really covers all of our planned and emergency capital maintenance uh, needs for our water and sewer systems. Um, this can include large meter replacements, uh, storage tank maintenance and improvements, uh, pump overhauls uh, and replacements, um, major lift station repairs, and sanitary sewer linings. This, by lumping them together into rums, uh, make sure that the money is there and accounted for in the budget, but also gives us the flexibility to, if we don't have major repairs that the, diminish the total in the account that we can allocate that to lining uh, and reduce our INI. So this is a uh, sort of a lump line item that covers all of these different aspects of repair and maintenance that also gives us uh, flexibility to improve our INI picture every year. Uh, phased water system improvements. We completed phase five water system improvements in 2010. Those that added uh, new water meter vaults in the city of Manassas and some new water lines on the west end of town. Phase six uh, design is complete um, and we're looking to start construction on that uh, in FY22. Uh, for the next foreseeable phases, phases six, seven, and eight, we'll primarily be focused on areas with high break rates, um, higher than industry standard. Um, there are plenty of areas uh, in, the, in the west end of the city where our break rates are much higher than acceptable industry standard. And we try to focus these phased improvements uh, around those high break rate areas uh, 
they will not only replace the existing um, cast water lines that are um, normally buried on rock or in poor conditions with ductile iron pipe, um, but also upgrading from six inch to eight inch in most cases and adding fire hydrants to improve our, uh, to improve our, hopefully improve our insurance picture uh, in the city at the same time. So they are comprehensive water system improvements, but area focused in areas of high break rate. Um, gravel easement roads. We have many um, easement access roads throughout the city uh, that are not capable of supporting um, the maintenance vehicles that we need uh, to take to them. So this may be a sewer easement where we need to get a flusher truck to perform sewer maintenance. It may be a um, stormwater uh, access easement where we need to get vehicles with a mowing trailer and mowing equipment back to them. Um, but these, these maintenance easements don't have good roadbeds. They often become saturated, uh, too muddy to pass. Uh, this project would make sure that we keep them wide, gravel, and accessible uh, so that we can perform the we can perform the maintenance operations we need to perform when we need to perform them. Stormwater enterprise fund projects, these are stormwater projects are primarily funded out of the stormwater enterprise fund. Um, usually this is for the actual terms of our MS4 permit, uh, sometimes for VSMP purposes, but more, more often than not just our MS4 permit requirements. Um, again, we have the RUM uh, line, line item, which is repairs, replacements, upgrades, and maintenance. Uh, this covers the repair and rehabilitation of existing storm sewers and appurtenances. Uh, it's $100,000 a year. Uh, some of these pictures, you see some of the sinkholes that are forming around the failing corrugated piping in the Connor Center. Uh, again, this is our uh, focus of emergency repairs right now will be in the Connor Center while we put together that master plan, that master rehabilitation picture. Um, we're looking at 102000 in FY21, but $539,000 over five years. Connor Center maintenance projects is something of its own. Uh, we have not identified all of the needs for pond replace or pond repairs or corrugated pipe repairs. Um, but as we finish up and get our Connor Center master plan put together, uh, we expect to discover uh, priority projects where storm sewer repairs must happen prior to paving repairs or in conjunction with water and sewer repairs. Um, so we've created this line item that will primarily track with the results of that Connor Center master plan. Um, the timeline is 21 to 2030. Uh, we anticipate approximately $1.1 million of expenditures in that timeline. The Manassas Drive at Bull Run Tributary Loma, uh, letter of um, map revision. That is when you have made improvements that alter the floodplain, uh, you must uh, request a letter of map revision from FEMA so that they actually alter the floodplain map to reflect the improvements that were made. There are seven areas throughout the city where the letter of map revision process has not been followed with new development. Um, this area right at Route 28 is one of them. Um, the implications of not having a letter of map revision are that the owners of the property uh, falsely are forced to pay flood insurance uh, because their structure shows in a floodplain where underground culvert um, or uh, 
retaining walls, things of that nature may have actually altered the floodplain and their facilities and structures may not be in the floodplain anymore due to improvements on the site. Uh, the city sees this as urgent uh, because it will impede uh, development in the future. Um, when floodplain runs through a site, it really um, affects the development picture. It affects the long-term costs uh, of ownership. And the city needs to take a look at these individually, these areas where floodplain no longer is reflective of the actual developed condition and seek letter of map revision for those sites. This initial letter of map revision uh, in this area is projected to cost $50,000. Our TMDL reduction projects are by far the biggest stormwater expenditure uh, that the city will probably ever have to take on. Um, total maximum daily load um, is what we are after here. Every, every MS4 permit holder in the state uh, is responsible for reducing their total maximum daily load which is your nutrient and suspended solid contributions into the watershed. Um, we started exploring projects that would reduce our TMDL uh, with our first TMDL reduction plan um, that was submitted uh, in 2015. Um, Connor Center Pond 1 has been designed. It is a retrofit to turn that pond uh, into an extended detention facility. That project design is complete and we're currently looking to put that project into construction phase. Russia Branch Stream Debt Restoration is where the city will accomplish most of its reduction goals uh, by the, the pictures you see in this slide are an illustration of what you can do with stream restoration where you widen the channel you create uh, stepped pools that essentially minimize the scour and reduce the suspended solids uh, that are scoured off the embankments. And we believe we can achieve most of our nutrient reduction and suspended solid reduction goals by stream restoration along Russia Branch. Unfortunately, though, this is a very expensive uh, undertaking. It's probably the most efficient way possible to achieve our goals, but still very expensive. Um, as we get into the latter years um, of stream restoration, we will have to borrow money, uh, millions of dollars, to achieve these goals. For right now, with Connor Center Pond 1 and our initial Russia Branch stream restoration and some other smaller TMDL re reduction projects, uh, we're looking at $100,000 of expenditures in 21 and only $4.7 million over five years. That will drastically increase after the lifespan of this particular CIP. That is all I had. Thank you for listening, and I will see you next year.